So the most important thing, probably in my recovery journey, was the moment I went from believing that I may never recover and that I may be stuck having this illness forever and never be able to do the things I want to do again. When I went from holding those beliefs to believing that full recovery was actually possible and it was possible for me and that I could definitely get there, that was probably the most important turning point for me by far. And from that moment, it still took like a year to recover, but things started changing and going in the right direction. And I was no longer getting worse and worse and worse. And it was still really difficult from that point on. There were still those of ups and downs and so many setbacks and times when I did kind of stop believing or like, you know, a lot of doubt, like, I don't know if I really can recover, I'm still dealing with symptoms, I'm still not fully recovered, all of that, but it was the the turning point for me. So the question is, what do you need to do to change your beliefs about recovery? And I'd encourage anybody who believes that they can't recover, who believes that recovery is only possible for somebody else, all these people that recovered, they have something different to me. If that's something you believe, firstly, it's okay. (laughs) I think it's quite a natural thing to believe as someone who's experienced this, that hopelessness is very easy to hold on to. And once it sets in, it can be difficult to let go of. And as time drags on, it's easy to lose hope and to believe that that's how things are going to stay. But question it question that belief is it serving you what is the cost of holding that belief so if you believe you're never going to recover what is that costing you to believe that and ask yourself that and maybe write down the answer or see what comes up but if i can tell you what the answer for me was at the time is it was costing me everything that (laughs) that belief was what was keeping me stuck the most Because if I didn't believe I could recover, then I couldn't recover. I wasn't going to recover while holding the belief that I couldn't recover. So I'd say that's an essential starting point if that's that's something that you believe. Because it's difficult to recover if you don't believe that you can. So as I said, from, from my personal experience, that was the most important turning point in this journey for me. Things stopped getting worse, symptoms stopped getting worse once I change my belief so how to go about changing your beliefs it's easier said than done so ask yourself what do you need to change that belief that was something that i read that really helped me to investigate this belief if i don't believe that recovery is possible for me then what do i need to believe that and if the answer is you need evidence that recovery is possible then go find it there's lots of there's lots of stuff online. So for me, it started with listening to people's recovery stories. That was the first turning point. And there's a lot of that as well. A great channel is Raylan Eagle. Um, that was the first channel that I found where I found a lot of recovery stories that really started to change my beliefs. That that um, that helped a lot. So I'll put the link um, somewhere on this video when I figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, but that, that was a really important resource in helping me to change my beliefs was listening to recovery stories from people and listening to multiple ones. You know, not all at once, but I, I found her channel. I listened to a few interviews. A couple of days later, I listened to another one. Every now and then, when I would feel like I needed it, I would go back and look for an interview that stood out to me. And the more and more that I watched, the more those beliefs in my mind started to change. It was like, look at all these people recovering. They're all recovering from very, some from very severe, some from different severities, but they're all recovering. Some of them very severe, a lot of them worse than me. Some of them had it longer than me, but they're recovering. And they're recovering because they believe that they would recover. That's really what stood out, was these people weren't talking about how hopeless they felt. And then the next day, they just started to feel better Sure, they had times where they really felt hopeless. I think everybody had 
these really dark moments where you just want to give up. You don't want to live like that anymore. But then something changes, some resource inspires you, something you find changes. Maybe something does start to go a little bit better and then you start to believe that recovery is possible. So number one, the YouTube videos of other people's recovery stories really helped me. Then number two, we're starting to do research into different possible methods to help me recover. So I listen to a lot of people talk about brain retraining methods and neuroplasticity based treatments, which is all about changing your attitude towards symptoms and the things that are keeping you stuck, your internal reactions and your fear base. That it, it, it's working on that hyper fight or flight alert state in your body, which happens to people with this illness. So for me, I read about, I heard people were recovering from something called the lightning process. So I read a book about that and maybe it wasn't the exact thing that I needed, but I picked up a lot of helpful information from the techniques that that book used. And it also focused on changing people's beliefs and uh, your attitude towards symptoms and was all about retraining how your brain perceives threats and that kind of thing. And then I read a few other books based on similar neuroplasticity based treatments. And then I read a book called How Your Mind Can Heal Your Body, which further supported my belief that I can heal myself if I just find the right things for me and if I change my beliefs and my attitude towards this illness. And then I read a book called The Brain That, or what was it called? It was by Norman Deutsch, Retraining Your Brain, something like that. The Brain That Changes Itself. That also, now I was getting the science-based evidence that I really wanted to support my belief that it was possible to recover through, you know, these methods. So all of that, if I wanted to change my belief, I found the evidence for that. So go and do that. Read the books that you need to do. Read the stories that you need to do. Find the information that you need to change your beliefs. And question, maybe there's other beliefs that are keeping you stuck. What do I believe that is keeping me stuck? And what is that costing me? Is that belief serving me? That's a very important practice. When these beliefs come to the surface, they stop making us... When we're aware of the beliefs, we no longer act unconsciously from those beliefs. Now we can be aware of it and we can see how these beliefs are keeping us stuck, how they are influencing our reactions and our behaviors. So from there, once the beliefs change, then the attitude changes, then the behaviors can change, the actions change, and your health can change. So for me, it started with the beliefs, then it was the research or finding the things I needed to support or, or to challenge the belief. I'd say that's more important. Instead of just putting a new belief on top, rather challenge the, the, the limiting beliefs. So recovery is impossible, challenge that belief. Find evidence to challenge that belief and then find what other beliefs are holding you back and follow that. And I'd say follow your instinct, follow what it is you need. Maybe, maybe you've got different beliefs holding you back. Maybe you're going to need different evidence. Maybe it's not evidence you need. Maybe you need something else to um, challenge the beliefs or to, to help change your beliefs. So for me, at the time, I was very science-based, analytical, conceptual. So I wanted hard scientific evidence. And for a long time, there was something keeping me stuck was always looking at scientific papers about chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, and how bad the statistics were on recovery and interventions that help with recovery. So that was my personal sticking point and something I had to work through. And that was keeping me stuck. I would dismiss things because it didn't have enough evidence for me. But once I started to try things, because I, I, I didn't give a shit anymore, I needed to recover. I was willing to do what I needed to do. I was willing to try things and things started changing. Then I did a course based on neuroplasticity brain retraining and it helped. It didn't fix me. It got me like 10%. And then from that 10%, then it was letting go of that course. That course served its purpose, but I couldn't hold on to that way of thinking anymore. 
then it was how, what is keeping me stuck now at this point what is keeping me stuck and then then it was the neuroplasticity course had daily brain retraining requirements that were quite tough like I had to for an hour a day implement this and I've never been somebody that does well with structured discipline so now that was holding me back because sometimes I wouldn't do it and then the belief would come if I'm not doing an hour a day I'm not going to recover so then that was holding me back so then I had to let go of that and it was just following what is keeping me stuck what do I need to focus on so from there it was you know becoming more aware of the thoughts and how that's causing me to stay stuck and then embracing the thoughts no longer fighting the thoughts was a massive one as well so yeah I think this is just a quick video on the importance of challenging your beliefs and finding the beliefs that are keeping you stuck and what you can do about it and really just try to feel into it for yourself because it's going to be different for everyone but you'll know if you really inquire into your beliefs you'll know it will come out and then you can challenge it and as I said that was the turning point for me as long as those beliefs are unconscious you're going to keep acting from that place and that's going to keep you stuck so you need to bring it to the surface so you can become aware and then start to work on challenging the belief. I hope this helps.